Starting to the bottom right of the map, we have our prime player. He is the Marine Prince. He is... Maru Prime. This guy might be your classmate in middle school or early high school. He's so young. His opponent to the top left. Much more experienced than StarCraft 2. He is... Liquid Hero. Hero obviously playing StarCraft 1 as well, but... His career started very early on in StarCraft 2, and he's been getting better and better. Hero is in a bit of a bad spot against Terran these days. He's been losing a lot of matches against Terran, and is just trying to get out of this. I would even call it a little bit of a slump in the TVP. His problem really is that this matchup seems to affect him a lot. Not only in the Wings of Liberty, but also in Heart of the Swarm. At the MLG Winter Showdowns, he lost to Pold with an 0-3. He lost to Bomber in the last round of Code A that he played without taking a single map. Puma took him out at the IGN 6 qualifier. We had him with a loss against Ryung and also a few losses against Noblesse and also against Marine King earlier this year. So against Terran, he's really struggling a little bit. And this is like the group where he has to prove that this is not going to affect him too much. He's up against three Terran players, so he has to yeah. play a lot of Protoss versus Terran. And this is probably the matchup that he prepared for the most. I would agree. And he's going for a double gas build here. These builds are getting more and more popular in uh, Wings of Liberty towards its end. And also, they're quite good in the Heart of the Swarm because of the Mothership Core. You want to be able to use that gas on that. but. He could also show us a tech build here, it's entirely possible. Um, the more likely we'll just see him expand and then go into a normal Wings of Liberty-esque play. Talking a little bit about Maru, about his opponent. I mean, we uh, scratch on Hero already a little bit, but Maru is in a, a matchup where he's been showing good results. And he was also able to take out a few Protoss just recently. Not only in the GSTL, where we, of course, played out of the Swarm. He was successful against Choya. He took down players like Brave, Brain, and Brown in uh, the GSL seasons. And also in uh, the IPL qualifier. Couldn't hold a candle to him. Didn't even take a single map. And he was successful against Tia. Also in the GSTL. That was actually back in the last year, in 2012. So still in Rings of Liberty. So in general, against Protoss, he's doing really well these days. But he hasn't played too too many TVPs in televised matches. Yeah. And of course, Hero is a strong opponent, is a very, very strong yeah, opponent to face, and probably also one of the favorites to get out of this group today. Yeah, this is going to be a match that Maru has prepared for quite a bit, because it's also his first match, and that's the one you know you, you play no matter what, and you have to put everything into, because it's kind of how you start your momentum in the group. Maru has taken double gas behind his command center. The command center was scouted by a really nice micro on Hero's probe scout. Now Maru is going to, from here, probably going to that medevac push that we've seen in the past, just simply because of how he's teching with his gases. There's the factory going down really quickly, in fact. Yeah, we have him with an expand after all, but the factory is already on its way, and with the gas that he has, the double gas in the main base, he will now be able to start his stop out very, very soon. And these drops are just so common against yeah, against Protoss. We've actually seen Flash dismantle rain on this map with drop play. Yeah. So it's very, very scary. If you're a player that has a good multitasking and knows how to deal with the Medivax, then you can pressure Protoss players so much. It's actually insane. I'm looking at this a little bit more closely now, and I'm not even sure we're going to see that drop that I, I point out necessarily yet. It could also be just some sort of factory plays, making a reactor. He does have at the stop board. Yeah, and we have seen more recently uh, people going for these really fast um, siege tank builds. And also, very rarely, but who was it yesterday who was doing this? Um, the Hellion play against Protoss, just making reactor Hellions throughout the game. That could be really scary as well. The Cloud Kingdom game, right? Yeah. I actually don't even know who was playing that anymore, but yeah, it's not going to be the timing attack. You can really see that he was banking up a few, a little bit of gas the entire game already, so he's not trying to be uh, at his opponent's base as fast as possible. Definitely going for a bit of a different strategy here. But has the option to go now into Cloak Banshees. Yeah. Look at the gas that he has. He's at 300. He could easily research Cloak, and that's exactly what he does. Starting the first Banshee right away. Going a little bit old school here on Hero. This is going to be the last thing Hero expects, because it's it's old school, like you said. It's a weird timing that doesn't really work out as well in Wings of Liberty anymore as it used to. 
But the scarier part of this is going to be what hero has to do to respond because there's also siege tanks coming. And yeah. against siege tanks and cloak banshees, you have to make sure you keep all your observers alive. That's really critical. But you have to make the right ratio of units. You can't have too many stalkers or too many zealots or you're just going to die. Exactly. The ratio is always going to be an issue. And the thing is, if you actually go for banshees, even if it's a little bit later, there's always such a huge threat to the Protoss player. And, uh, well... The one thing that Hero will ha easily deal with is the cloak itself, because we have two observers already on the map, so he will easily be able to detect those Banshees. The big problem is that the Banshees alone will always make sure that you have to leave a few of your units behind in your main base, and that you, in the back of your head, always know there is this threat that if I move out or if I don't pay attention to the minimap for just a second, there might be a Banshee in my main base and just kill my harvesters. Yeah, you have to be extremely careful about that. And... The other thing that makes you do is make more observers potentially, like for example this one gets taken out immediately. He only has one additional observer. He has a second one just popping out, but he keeps making observers. He has the robotic support bay done. He wants to, if he can, make a Colossus or two, but that's robo time lost, making those additional observers. He is getting the armor upgrade now for his units. He's even getting cannons, which I really, really like. Yeah, it's something that we don't see that often. Getting the cannon here will help him with the detection and also make sure that later on he will be able to move out. The Banshee, of course, not being killed here. Maru has too good of a micro for that, and a nice spot here. He finds the sweet spot, takes down the pylon, and Hero is forced to react immediately with another pylon to make sure that those upgrades at the Robotics Bay can actually finish. I'm not sure if that new pylon is actually covering it. It's gonna be I, close. I think it doesn't quite. I think the old pylon would have, but this one does not. Ah, oh, the Banshee has to be really careful though now. Okay, is able to save it. That's he the pylon. cloak. And he is going to... It does power the robotics, by the way. He canceled Cloak, and he's going to go into reactor to production at the starport now. Goes into first a few medivacs, but we'll probably start Vikings right afterwards, because he's seen already, obviously, the robotics work with the Banshee. Yeah, he knows exactly what's coming right now, and having those information, this is the most important part. You have a few Protoss players that will just try to show one Colossus and then switch into the Templar Archive. But with the tech that he already saw at the robotics bay, he can fairly assume that this is not the case here. You don't really commit this much gas to a tech choice if you're suddenly just changing up about the only one Colossus. Yeah, exactly. Three more gates going down for Hero. It's going to be really hard for him to make anything but Colossi for a while. The tech switch costs too much, and if Maru has any idea that he's trying to tech switch, he could attack and kill him. And even if he doesn't know, if he just happens to attack while you're trying to switch tech, it can be deadly. Yeah. He's making the Twilight Council now, and this is not going to be... It's not going to be easy once Maru starts to pressure a little bit. And Maru is now getting more and more siege tanks. He's also adding all these upgrades for his bio force, especially, of course, the combat shield and the stim. Really important here for the damage burst that he wants to show off later. We have him currently at 52 harvesters, the same amount of workers that we see Hero using in this game. But Hero is trying now to get into another base, whereas Maru, on the other hand, didn't even start a third command center just yet. He has so far no intentions of, of doing so. Yeah, this doesn't look that way. He's getting more and more Vikings. Siege tank count is already where he wants to be. He's like got six of them, making Marauders now. Stem and combat shields are about to finish, and he will start to move across the map very soon. He's got a massive lead in supply, and the army supply for him is nearly doubled out of here, 97 to 59 right now. On the other hand, we have, didn't have Hero overcommit to uh, workers either. He's not getting uh, the, he's not getting too much just yet. He's producing harvesters, but it's not like he's on a massive amount. So when he scouts what's going on here, and he has the observer in position, he can delay this push, even try to buy himself enough time for the storm upgrade that will surely follow very soon. Stemple Archive is about to finish. And if he buys himself enough time to get me Amy even charged out, he could try to pull this off. Problem yeah. is, that's going to take quite a long time, and I'm not quite sure if he can buy this much. The thing is, I feel like Hero is prepared for a siege tank marine push, but that's not what he's dealing with anymore. He's dealing with a marine marauder force with medivacs with some siege tanks. And here comes the force fields, but the bio force back here is insanely strong. Yeah. Hero may have bitten off more than he could chew trying to take that third base. Yes, he did cancel it, 
But Maru has a crushing force here. The Vikings leading the charge now. Tanks siege up. The Bio Force alone can almost fight Hero's army. Hero is being forced back. He needs perfect force fields in the next fight, and he's trying to pull them off. There are two high Templars, but they don't have Storm just yet. The Vikings in pursuit take down the first Colossus. The second one trying the to trying to get away here. But this is such a slaughter. Hero is losing everything. He just doesn't have Storm yet, and he needs it to hold the ramp. Yeah, he tried to tech and expand. It did not work. And Maru is punishing him hard for it. This is going to be the end. The Colossus doing the best it can back there. Finally will fall to the Viking. There's barely any probes left for Hero. We're going to have to see him type GG. Maru is in the middle of his opponent's expansion and the natural it is gone. Hero is on his last leg, his last base. He's trying to hold the ramp. Maru already sieging up. Hey, there's the storm, but it's way too late to change the course of the game. Exactly. The Banshee alone uh, could have killed all of those units. But he's got two Vikings and a bunch of Marauders under the targets down the Robo. Battle Moral's never going to help anybody. GG. GG. And Maru takes the game against Hero. Well done here. Also in a 1-0 now in this group. I, I think that... If Euro had switched into Storm and then tried to take a third, he would have been a little bit more comfortable there. Or if he had taken the third and tried to keep making more Colossi, there were not that many Vikings out. There were just enough Vikings for that many Colossi, you know? Yeah. And once again, this trend continues a bit for but yeah for Hero, where he's just not really strong against Terran, where he's really struggling. The map, of course, lends itself to this timing for Maru, where he is on two bases and really aggressively pushes forward. Hero didn't really expect him to be this aggressive. And with a little bit more time with the Storm, Protoss player could have been able to hold the ramp, but this was not the case here. The timing for Maru just way too good. It was a weird timing, too. It yeah. was like something that you don't normally see. It was a siege tanks into a massive bio force that were supported by Siege tanks and of course Vikings. So Maru is continuing what Creator did yesterday. He's showing a prime performance here in the up and downs. And uh, we're going to find out if he might even be able to sneak into Kades today. The players that we have right now is going to be Nesti versus Fantasy, two very, very strong opponents. And I can't wait to see this game. I'm a little bit scared because every time I see Nesti play against a Terran player, he seems to be doing extremely well in Until the beginning, the in the mid game, and suddenly in the late game, exactly, he falls apart. That game on a whirlwind against, yeah, against a life comes to mind. We also had him against Byung, which was very, very different. And um, yeah, I just got an update in Korean in front of the producers. Exactly. After the fourth set, we're gonna have our break. Now after the third set, yeah, really interesting. <laughs> Maybe the wrong time to. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we got it, guys. We, it's fine. Uh, yeah, <laughs> everything's good. Um, so the map was, was Cloud that? Kingdom. I don't know. The map um, was Cloud Kingdom going into this one, though, not uh, Whirlwind. Exactly. So, Nest T. We might see different Nest T on this map, and I think that uh, trying to to just kind of push aside what just happened. Nest T on this map, though, may end up in late game because Fantasy can play a, a late game style where. He's aggressive all over the map, and he splits his units up really well. So the fourth base here is one at the bottom right that is going to be constantly attacked by Fantasy. And I think part of the issue for Nestine is now going to be his creep spread. And does he go Mutas on this map? I actually would expect him to... Uh to go into Infestus this time. The reason being is we talked a lot about Nestea and his mutilist choices, but in the recent games he always chose to go into Infestus on Cloud Kingdom. What I really want to see is what exactly Fantasy can do in a late game. At the beginning we were a little bit harsh on him when he started to transition to StarCraft 2 because his macro was really nothing that was standing out. It was actually quite bad in a few games that we casted. But since then he improved it so much that he didn't slip once in the recent games that we could observe from him. So this is going to be very scary for Nest T here. And I feel that this game is not gonna only gonna show Nest T's late game performance, but also fantasies. We might see something completely different. Maybe even Nest T going for a timing and going for a Roach bailing attack, yeah, which can we, be quite successful here. We could even see Fantasy, who showed us in his first game a double 11 proxy barracks. We could see something similar to that. Or even Fantasy changing things up and going for gas on one base. I, I doubt that's what we're gonna see. I'd probably bet my life that's not what we're gonna see, but Anything is possible here. Nesty is one of the smartest players out there. Mechanically, he seems to be a little bit weaker in the late game, but his decision making is what gets him there. Yeah. The one thing that I would really like to see here is Nesty trying to end it in the mid game. This is where he's really strong, and in the late game, well, maybe even uh, he 
changed up a little bit, but I would love to see a good fight between those two, and I'm sure that's exactly what we're going to witness now.